Hello everyone, in this video we will be looking at the topic on length of a line segment. The objective of the lesson is to learn how to find the length of a line segment given the coordinates of its endpoints. So if we were to take a look at the diagram shown on the right over here, we have uh, the coordinates given for the endpoints of this particular line segment. The endpoints have the coordinates negative 4, negative 3 as well as 3, 5. So using these coordinates, how are we to determine the length of this particular length line segment? That is what we are going to be learning today. So this is the key question that we're trying to answer today. We want to figure out how do we uh, find out the length of a line segment given the coordinates of its endpoints. In a typical question that we see uh, in any test or exam or whatever, okay, most diagrams are never drawn to scale. Okay, so we need to figure a way out to determine the length of this line segment okay, if we are given certain information about it. So in this case, we are given the information regarding its coordinates of its endpoints. So I have found out that the length, the coordinates of this particular endpoint is going to be 3, 5. And then the coordinates of this particular endpoint here is negative 4, negative 3. I have decided to call this point A and this point B. So how can we make use of the coordinates in order to determine the length of this particular line segment AB? The hint is that we need to use the Pythagoras theorem. So what are the key requirements in Pythagoras theorem? We need to have a right angle triangle. Okay? So in order to have uh, to apply Pythagoras theorem, we need to be able to figure out a right angle triangle. Okay, that can apply to this diagram over here. Okay, but so what if I can create a right angle triangle? Okay, we do not anyhow create a right angle triangle. We need to uh, use some strategy. Okay, a employ a certain strategy behind it and do it strategically. Sorry. Okay, so um, we shall let A B to be the hypotenuse. In case you have forgotten what a hypotenuse is, a hypotenuse is the length of a triangle that is opposite the right angle. Okay, so give it some time to think about how can we create a right angle triangle such that AB is going to be the hypotenuse. In order to do that, we will first do a vertical line down from point A and then a horizontal line to the right from point B. Okay, so I have strategically done my right angle triangle in this manner, okay, such that this corner over here is going to be the right angle. And I have my AB to be the uh, hypotenuse. So what are the coordinates of this point here? Let me call this point C. Okay, so the X coordinate of this particular point will follow the X coordinate of point A and that is going to be 3. And then the Y coordinates of point uh, C over here will follow the y coordinates of point B and that is going to be negative 3. So what if I have found the coordinates of C over here? Okay, so to apply my Pythagoras theorem, I need our so-called a square plus b square equals to c square. Remember? So we need to know the length of AC. We also need to know the length of BC. And that is not difficult because AC is a vertical length and then BC is actually a horizontal length. We can simply count the number of units or do a simple subtraction. So the length of AC is going to be 5 units looking at the Y coordinate here minus away the Y coordinate of C. So 5 minus negative 3 that will give us 8 units. That is the length of AC. Then the length of BC, since this is a horizontal length, we can count number of units, but most of the time or sometimes you are not given the grid, so counting may be difficult. So we see that it is the difference in the x coordinates, so we can take 3 minus away negative 4. That will give us 7 units. Okay, so now that we have determined the length of AC as well as the length of BC, we can now finally look for the length of AB because this is where we apply our Pythagoras theorem. 
So our Pythagoras theorem will tell us that AB squared is equal to BC squared plus AC squared. So by placing in the values that I have already calculated, I will be able to find that AB is going to be square root of 113 units if that is left to be in exact. Otherwise, it will be 10.6 units when left to three significant figures. Okay, my apologies that I forgot to put in my bracket 3SF over here. Alright, I hope this has helped you to understand how is it that we can make use of Pythagoras theorem to determine the length of this particular line segment. Okay, so now we want to determine a general formula that will help us to solve any problem whenever we're given the coordinates of the endpoints of a line segment. So given a line segment over here, if I have this endpoint to be called A that has a certain coordinates, let's call it x1 and y1, and then I have the other endpoint called B that has the coordinates x2, y2. Okay, our key question over here is to find out the length of a line segment given the coordinates. So applying what we just saw earlier on, we drew a vertical line down and a horizontal line right. That creates a right angle and that particular point over there is C which, but, which the X coordinate follows the X coordinate of A and then the Y coordinate follows the uh, Y coordinate of B. Okay, So this vertical length is AC that will be y, Y1 minus Y2 and then BC being the horizontal length it is X1 minus X2. Then we apply our Pythagoras theorem to see that AB square is equal to AC square plus BC square. Hence AB is equal to the square root of Y1 minus Y2 bracket square plus X1 minus X2 bracket square. This formula that I have uh, highlighted or made in red is the formula that you need to be familiar with in order to find the length of a line segment. Okay. I know that this, com uh, this formula may look a little bit complicated. Furthermore, it is not going to be given in your formula list. All right? So sometimes it may slip out of our mind. So how do we try to recall it? Always remember that the fundamental principle for us to get this formula is our Pythagoras theorem. So rely on the strategy that we are going to create a right angle triangle that can facilitate the finding of the length AB or any length of a line segment. Okay, so knowing the principles behind it will help you be able to solve a question even if you have forgotten the formula. So don't always don't go into a panic just because you have forgotten a formula. Okay, there are ways to get around it still. Right? Now now that we have learned the formula, okay, which is this one over here. So given the coordinates of the endpoints of a line segment to be this, this is the general formula that we will be applying later on to some questions. Okay, there are some frequently asked questions regarding the formula that I want to address over here. First of all, do you, uh, you may ask, can it actually be length of a line segment to be square root of y2 minus y1 square plus x2 minus x1 square? So the difference between this formula and this formula is that instead of 1 first then 2, 1 first then 2, we have 2 first then 1, 2 first then 1. What do you think the answer would be? Is it possible? Are they the same formula? Are they asking? Are they going to give us the same result? So the answer is yes. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether you're going to remember it as one, y1 minus y2 plus x1 minus x2, okay, just truncating the formula a little, right? You can always think about it as y2 minus y1 plus x2 minus x1 over here, okay? So it doesn't quite matter. That is because your x and y, okay, coordinates over here, they are just arbitrary variables. So it really doesn't matter. It's just a thing that I have decided to use to label it, okay? Furthermore, we also know that 6 minus 2 bracket square plus uh, and 2 minus 6 bracket square, these two are actually equal in value. They both give us a value of 16. Okay, so it actually doesn't matter even if I swap around okay, the coordinates itself, but I will still recommend that you ensure that there is that 
uh, corresponding. Okay, the way that corresponds. So y2 and x2, they are both on the left of the bracket. They create or they link to this particular coordinate over here. And then y1 and x1, they link to this particular coordinate over here. The reason for me to recommend that you write it in a corresponding manner is so that if you need to check your working, you can actually go back and check okay, whether you have gotten the coordinates correct or not. If you write it all over the place, despite getting the same value, the correct answer, okay, or maybe getting a wrong answer, it makes it difficult for you to check if it's not corresponding. Okay. So the length of line, uh, another question that you may ask, okay, is the length of line segment, could I instead maybe starting with Y, I start with X. Okay, so maybe X1 minus X2 square plus Y1 minus Y2 square. Okay. Does it really matter? Actually, it doesn't matter. They are, it is going to give you the same answer. So it can actually be remembered as this first, starting with x, then y. All right. uh, that's because we know that 3 square plus 4 square and 4 square plus 3 square are equal in value. So it's just a rotation, a switch between this set of brackets here and this set of brackets. Since the middle is actually a plus, it really doesn't matter. So I hope that this has helped you to understand the formula a little so that you know how to apply later on when we encounter questions asking us to find the length of a line segment when given a certain pair of coordinates. Let us now take a look at some examples for us to learn how to apply this formula that we have just learned. So looking at practice now 1, part A, we want to find the length of the line segment okay, that uh, joins these two points. So using our formula, we are able to say that the length of line segment CD, okay, so CD itself when used in capital letter, that refers to a line segment. Okay, it is equals to 6 minus away 3 bracket square plus 2 minus away negative 2 bracket square. So notice how I wrote in a corresponding manner. And in my habit, I usually start off with the x coordinates, then the y coordinates. So as mentioned earlier on, it actually didn't matter. Okay, whether you start with X first or start with Y first. Then we press into our calculator. Okay, my habit is that I will press for the value inside the square root first. So that I can know what is the exact root, exact third itself. Okay, that will be square root of 25. Which simplifies to 5 units because we know that 25 is a perfect square. So the root of 25 is 5 units. Okay, next, part B, the length of the line segment MN, okay, applying the same formula, that will mean negative 1 minus away 6 bracket square plus 5 minus away negative 4 bracket square. Okay, so as usual, I like to keep my values to uh, exact form. Okay, so I key in the value that is found inside the square root that will give me 130. So the length is square root 130. But we should still leave our answer to truncated 5 SF first, followed by a final answer of 11.4 units 3 SF. Okay, so you need not leave your answer in exact form uh, all the time, but there are some cases whereby you will find that leaving your answer in exact form is extremely helpful. And we will see that in the next example. We'll now take a look at practice now 3 question 2. It says here that a triangle has vertices P, Q, and R. Coordinates are given. They want us to determine if triangle P, Q, R is a right-angled triangle. Firstly, we take note that their question is asking us to determine. So it may not be necessary that the triangle is a right-angled triangle. Secondly, how are we going to determine that something is a right-angled triangle? You should be finding this, this type of question familiar because we encountered and handled it last year. Okay. However, it's just that the calculations are a little bit complicated due to the need for us to use the length of line segment formula. Okay. And because we are given the coordinates in this case. Previously in SEC2, we didn't have to deal with coordinates when solving questions like this. So to determine whether this triangle is going to be a right angle triangle or not, we will find out the length of each segment. So finding out the length of PQ, followed by finding the length of QR, 
as well as the length of PR. So the length of PQ, using our formula, we will be able to get that it is equals to square root 85. So now, this is the part where I want us to actually leave our answer to exact. Because when using our Pythagoras theorem, I want to show that perhaps okay, PQ square is equals to PR square plus QR square. Okay, if I leave my answer to truncated 5SF, okay, are we going to be very certain that PQ square is going to be equal in value to QR square plus PR square? So keeping our value to exact will be helpful for us to ensure and safeguard that equality uh, when we want to make a claim. Then we find out the length of PR using our length of line segment formula as well. And that will give us an exact value of square root 65. Similarly, we will also find the length of QR that will give us the exact value of square root 50. So now that we have square root 85, square root 65 and square root 50, we need to know that in a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be the longer side. So PQ, based on how we see the values, PQ is going to be the longer side. So we need to check whether PQ square is it equals to PR square plus QR square. So PQ square itself is equals to 85 and PR square plus QR square itself is going to be equals to 115. So because PQ square is not equals to PR square plus QR square, we conclude that triangle PQR is not a right angle triangle. Right? So this is how we go about determining with justification. Okay, all this working out just are our justification. Okay, to show that triangle PQR is a is not a right angle triangle. Alright. I will now bring us to take a look at textbook page 96, exercise 4a, question 2. Okay, this shall be the last example that I wish to demonstrate through this video. So in this question, it says that the distance between the points A and B is 10 units. You are given the coordinates of A as well as the coordinates of B. We want to find the possible values of P. So based on the way the question has been phrased, it does suggest that there is one more than one okay, value or more than one answer to P. So since we are given the distance or in other words the length of AB and we are given the coordinates of A and B, we can apply our length of line segment formula to find out the length of AB. And that would actually be equals to P squared plus P squared upon expansion or simplification that is square root of 2P squared. The question mentioned that this particular distance is actually 10 units. So we can form an equation to say that square root of 2P square is equal to 10. To solve this, we will say that 2P square is equal to 10 square equals to 100 because we can take the square on both sides of the equation. Such that P square will eventually be 100 divided by 2 which is 50 and hence P is equal to plus minus square root of 50. We should evaluate this value to leave our answer to 3SF. So the truncated 5SF value will be as such. And our final answer would be 7.07 .07 or negative 7.07 .07 to 3SF. I hope that with these few examples, you are able to gain a better understanding of how to apply our length of line segment formula and also understand how did we derive this length of line segment formula. When we meet back again in class, I will be reinforcing this concept with a few more other examples. Thank you for your time in watching this video. I'll see you soon.